first opened on June 18th, 2022. Accent colour on settings portal, and thanks to the one and only Georgia Stavrakis, who seems to be in basically every repo, it has finally been merged. Now, details aside for how it works currently, the basic idea is a consistent way across desktops and toolkits to set an accent color on your windows. Now the idea of setting accent colors already exists on Linux, but if you set an accent color for your KDE Plasma desktop, isn't going to be used on your GNOME applications or your elementary applications or your future cosmic applications. This aims to fix that and add a consistent source of truth for what the accent color should be. Whilst the portal has been merged now, there was a period of six, seven, eight or so months where it seemed like it wasn't going to happen, thanks to some reasonable and not so reasonable concerns. Nowadays we have acts which are acknowledgements this is something being worked on by Gnome, Budgie, KDE, Cosmic and Elementary. This isn't every single desktop environment, there are still major ones like Cinnamon, like XSCE, like LXQT, like Mate, but just having Gnome and KDE in the discussion, that covers the major ones. Then you have Cosmic, which doesn't exist yet, but is going to be on Pop OS, so it probably will be fairly important. And then Elementary, well, Elementary is doing the Elementary thing, but they like to get involved with everything as well. So let's go right back to the start when the proposal was first being made. Accent Colors provide a way for users to personalize their desktop in a simple, developer-friendly, and effective way. Throughout the community, there has been a general interest in the inclusion of Accent Colors within apps and desktop environments. This proposal aims to standardize an Accent Color key on the settings portal, and this sounds absolutely great. The problem is when the proposal was first made, there wasn't any reach outs to the desktops and the toolkit developers. So at this stage, there was some discussion about how the colors should work. Should we have named colors? So should it be like red, blue, green, so on and so forth? Should it be arbitrary colors? But it was just sort of talk amongst the people who are working on the portal. Then nothing Neko asks, what is being used in Plasma, Ubuntu and planned in Gnome? And this is when Alice MKH had this to say. Nothing. This wasn't discussed in GNOME. Now, if you've been over on the GNOME GitLab, you might know this person as Alice Mikelenko. I thought there was some kind of plan. Thanks for the correction. And this is where we get to the fun part. So this thread, as a lot of threads do, made the rounds on Reddit, Hacker News, on various Linux news sites, and things like that. But not going directly to the people involved in the projects. Some vague plans, sure. But in general, coming to GNOME and other desktops to discuss this was the job of the people backing this proposal, preferably before opening a PR2. Literally the only reason I know about it at all was because of a random accent colour discussion in the GTK room, and Lane's mentioned there's now a proposal PR. There's also no agreement on design side, accent colours are needed at all, so talking to designers should have been the first step. Gnome has their whole libad waiter thing, their recoloring API they're working on, they can do all of that stuff entirely separate from this proposal being used. This proposal is about a generic standard across desktops, and they can just choose not to work with that. There are no Gnome designers here, and at least nobody from KDE Visual Design Group who I recognize, unless you got somebody on Discord that is. I was the only one on the team who got any contact at KDE, so Dominic is here. I'm still reaching out to System76 for Cosmic. If you could bring some GNOME designers in, that would be appreciated. This was very much a temporary issue. Yeah, everything should have probably been set up before the PR was made, but now that you're here, and now that you know about it, how about we move on from that and focus on the functionality at hand? The first concern is very much a GNOME concern that I don't think anybody else really raised. There's no agreement on the design side whether accent colors are needed at all, which seems like a very strange concern to me considering that Gnome is working on accent colors internally, so I thought it would have been agreed upon that that was something that was a good thing to have. Like I know Gnome has their whole, we want things to look exactly like the way we want them to look like, but 
GNOME's working on accent colors, so I thought that was already like a, a settled problem. The actual concern, which is shared across the other desktops, is how those colors should be handled, whether they should be named colors or arbitrary RGB values. What I mean here is over on elementary, they make use of red, orange, yellow, green, teal, blue, purple, pink, brown, and chromatic gray, which I guess you just say gray. Others, like Libhelium, use red, orange, yellow, green, teal, blue, purple, and pink. But the definitions of what those colors mean are then up to the interpretation of the desktop. So you can have a list of named colors like you have in your terminal, for example, but what that color actually means to that environment is then defined by the environment. This does cause a bit of a problem. It works just fine if you're sticking with one toolkit, but if you start combining, say, QT and GTK applications, you might run into something like the definition of Plasma Blue is this, whereas the definition of Ubuntu Blue is this. They are both very much blue, and blue is going to be applied to them, but the way that blue looks is going to look inconsistent. You also run into the problem of what color names do you use? Do you use the elementary names? Do you use the GNOME names? Do you use a superset of every possible basic color you want to have? But what if you then have a desktop that wants to have multiple versions of red? You want to have red, you want to have light red, you want to have vibrant red, you want to have bluish red, you want to have like a, a close to orange red. Like, do you have all of those as well? And what if there is a color someone wants to add in the future? Do you then expand the spec to add more colors or just say, no, these are the only colors we're allowed to have? Or your other option is skipping all that and just using arbitrary RGB values. So if I set the color to be 255 by zero by zero, assuming we're in the same color space, this is just gonna be the same red. It doesn't matter if I'm on Gnome, Plasma, Budgie, Cosmic, or anything else, I've set the color to red, and that's the color it's going to use. Now the problem with this is there are some desktops that aren't going to want to do that. They're going to want to have a list of colors. This is when you start getting to nearest accent. So if you set it to be 255 by 0 by 0, Ubuntu GNOME might not have that exact color. So it's going to try to go to the nearest color to that, which might be like an orangey color. And once again, we now see some inconsistencies. And there is a very good reason why you might not want to offer arbitrary colors to the user. Controlled contrast. GNOME has a design team that is very strict about how color should be used. So this is a calendar that is using a blue accent. Let's go down to the accent being yellow. Now, with the indicator down here, that looks perfectly fine. But the text here, the contrast is a little bit low and it's kind of hard to read. Now, I have no issue with this, but some users might really struggle with it. But these two yellows are the exact same color. This one looks a lot easier to read because the way we perceive color is very much based around what that color is surrounded by. In this case, you're judging the yellow based on the black text inside of it. In this case, you're judging it based on the white background around it, in which case the contrast is far, far lower. But on the dark theme, that problem doesn't exist. But let's go with a dark color. So this is purple. This looks perfectly fine with the indicator and also the text. But let's go down to the dark theme. In this case, the same problem happens. The indicator down here looks perfectly fine with the white text inside of it. It looks, you know, a little bit brighter. But this text is a little bit low in the contrast side. But these are the exact same colors. And Libidwaiter has a very simple solution. Don't use the same color. In this case, with the purple, they make it a little bit lighter, and with the yellow, they make it a bit darker. Now, the problem with yellow is when you make it darker, it starts going into that, like, brown sort of territory. These colors, though, are not being computed. These are hand-picked colors. They can be computed, but there is no guarantee the result is going to be what is expected by the design team. So Cassidy James, one of the co-founders of Elementary, and now working at Endless, broke this down really, really well. Hey all, I spent about an hour of my life reading through the backlog, and it doesn't seem like there's really any progress past the fundamental disagreement around named versus arbitrary colors. Before I even started planning the video, that's at least how much time I spent trying to understand the absolute mess of this feed. 
Some people were suggesting maybe we include both. The problem is that means it's basically two separate specifications. We have to decide on one. So arbitrary colors, which expects toolkits slash platforms to do all the requisite color science to guarantee a color is always accessible across light and dark styles and in different contexts like icons, button backgrounds, and text foregrounds. It's certainly theoretically possible, but guaranteeing it's both accessible and pretty algorithmically is exceptionally challenging. Plus there's a challenge of the user chose Ubuntu Orange, but instead they got this muddier, hue rotated version. That's not on brand. The second option, or second part of the first option, is nearest accent, where an arbitrary color is stored in the spec, but then toolkits just choose their nearest predefined named accent based on it. I feel like this is where we'll end up on GNOME and Elementary OS. Oh, he predicted this really well. If we can't agree on named colors, but I don't love it. You have the same problem as above, where you choose a very precise color, and then the toolkit snaps it to something that might not be what you wanted. It's a sort of false sense of precision, and this is probably going to lead to a lot of bug reports. And then you have name colors, where if you set it to be red, everything is just going to snap to whatever red is on that environment. So Plasma is going to use Plasma Red, Gnome is going to use Gnome Red, Elementary is going to use Elementary Red, Budgie is going to use Budgie Red, and everything's gonna look inconsistent anyway. Basically, you don't achieve anything then. This is how the landscape breaks down. KD is in favor of arbitrary colors. Budgie is in favor of arbitrary colors. Gnome is hard in favor of name colors. Cosmic has an interesting stance. Cosmic will support arbitrary colors for each semantic color and will also support generating a color scheme from a single arbitrary accent color. However, there is no need to embed this complexity into a cross-toolkit accent color mechanism. If the user is creating a custom cosmic color scheme, they can also create a custom color scheme for other toolkits as desired. So they are going to use arbitrary colors internally, but they are willing to work with what the other desktops need. And elementary is in favor of named colors. There's a problem here, because using arbitrary color values would be basically dead on arrival for ensuring any kind of color contrast, but using name colors would mean apps built against different platforms would have slightly different interpretations of what orange, for example, means. But I think the latter is ultimately more usable. And then once again, Cassidy is the voice of reason. In the interest of moving something forward, I think from the GNOME side, we could agree on storing an arbitrary color in the spec and do the mapping to an accent color on our side. Elementary would need to implement something similar on their end. I don't love it, as I think we'll see some inconsistent results as Exxon pointed out, e.g. blue, mint, green, green, lime, yellow, etc. But if it's between stuck forever in committee and shipping something that works well enough within each ecosystem with the potential to work across desktops, I think we just move forward. I'd much rather align on that than to ship a weird double spec. But Cassidy is just one person, and as is often the case with big desktop disagreements, it's primarily between KDE and GNOME. Even if the spec supports arbitrary colors, GNOME is simply not going to use them, and will only support its defined set of colors, even outside of the GNOME environment. Over on the GNOME GitLab on the add accent color key issue, Nate Graham, otherwise known as Pointed Stick from KDE, had this to say. I can totally understand your concerns about arbitrary colors from a QA perspective. Though I agree it's a concern, can I suggest a compromise? You allow arbitrary colors in the backend code, but only expose a hard-coded set of colors to the user in GNOME settings. That way you can limit users running GNOME Shell to one of the QAable accent colors. But when GNOME apps run in Plasma, those GNOME apps get the exact accent color the user already chose and the KDE apps use. Culturally, I think this may be a good fit. Users of GNOME Shell expect a no rough edges experience and will get that by being limited to a limited set of QAable accent colors. Users of Plasma expect a more customizable experience and are willing to accept the risk of breakage for edge cases. When it happens, it'll be obvious that it's their own fault and they won't submit bug reports against GNOME apps. At worst, they'll submit bug reports for us and we'll accept the responsibility of handing them accordingly. 
what do you think? This is a completely reasonable solution and solves basically everybody's problems. So, we're already fighting very hard to get even this, that being the named colours. Arbitrary colours are just not happening. For example, designers are already not super excited about integrating with the portal in the first place. Some people offer some solutions, and Alice has this to say. Folks, let's not bring bike shedding here, please. Arbitrary colours are not happening, period. At that rate, this won't happen at all. Then Joshua Strobler Budgie said this. It is disappointing to see that calls from folks like Nate and KDE on expanded capabilities for implementations and users be rejected by GNOME. Arbitrary colours are not happening, period. At this rate, it won't happen at all. This will create visual inconsistency between applications of varying toolkits and vendors. I would highly encourage GNOME get on board with the idea of supporting arbitrary values, which will more greatly increase implementation flexibility and user choice. And then finally, someone actually said it. You, me, everyone discussing this thread, and everyone just reading this thread, trying to stay informed, all know that this is never going to happen. I think that when it comes to accent colours and other such things, you want users to be allowed to define freely. It's not productive to hinge discussion on the participation and acknowledgement of platforms that do not want users to have these sorts of choices. The onus should be on the restrictive platforms to adapt the implementations of the permissive specifications, not on permissive platforms to convince restrictive platforms to allow their preferences to exist at all. This is one single facet of visual customization that has been stalled for over a year. One single color choice. What I don't understand is why you want GNOME's approval and participation here. Your goals and theirs are diametrically opposed and you don't need them. Plasma, Cosmic, and Tau all want user-definable color expression, so why does it matter that GNOME doesn't? They also didn't want decorations in Wayland, and they also didn't want tearing in Wayland, and those things happen without them anyways. GNOME doesn't have them, but they still exist. GNOME should be allowed to make an environment and application ecosystem that chooses to be restrictive in the name of creating a precisely designed user experience, but that shouldn't affect the rest of you. So this is pretty much where we're at. It's been merged into the portals, but there's still a lot of work to be done. There is a lot of related PRs, whether this is going to be resolved on the GNOME side is another question. There's work being done on Budgie, work being done on KDE, Cosmic hasn't got to that point yet, and some work being done over on the elementary side. But it's not here yet, and it's probably still going to be, you know, a couple of years out. But we've laid the groundwork, and hopefully GNOME comes around and works with the community. With that being said, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you happen to be a GNOME user? Are you a KDE user? Maybe you're going to be using the future Cosmic. Do you think the idea of accent colours is a great idea and should be user definable? Or do you prefer the idea of named colours and want your desktop to give you that finer control to give you a more crafted experience? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out Patreon, subscribe, silly bearer pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and why is it always GNOME?